All right, so we're going to continue with um, this last page of the section four notes. Um, so here it says to find the measure of each angle to the nearest tenth of a degree. I have that tangent of A is 1.4176. What I have to do is essentially to cancel out the tangent. And the way, I which I, and the, the way in which I do that is with the inverse tangent. And whatever I do to the left side, I have to do the same to the right side. So here, the inverse tangent of that as well. Okay? These make each other go away. So A is the inverse tangent of 1.4176. And just like I mentioned yesterday, um, you can just plug that into your calculator. When you, where you have your row of trig buttons, sine, cosine, tangent, um, here, right above those, you have your inverse sine, cosine, and tangent. So I'm going to do shift or second tangent of that number, 1.4176. Okay? And that gives me 54.8 degrees. Yeah. It'll, well, look here, nearest tenth of a degree, okay? So it's, it says right here that you have to run to the nearest tenth of a degree. If, you, if, you're, if you're solving for a tenth, like if you want a tangent of an angle equal, then it's four decimal places. Okay, so this is 54.8 degrees. All right, so same thing here. B, if you have sine of B equals something, then what's B equal to? Inverse sine of 0 0.6307. And when you plug that in, what do you get? 39.1 degrees. Okay? All right. Um, Look at this. You have a triangle. Now, until now, we had a side missing. Now, we have an angle missing. All right? Um, and it says to run to the nearest tenth. So, we're missing that angle. I circle the angle that I'm looking for. And then I have to go and label the sides that are, you know, the key players in the problem. You have to label them as opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse. So, in this case, what is the six? Which one is the six? Opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse? It's adjacent. And what about this one? Opposite. So I have adjacent and opposite. So in my Sokatoa, which one is related to adjacent and opposite? Tangent. So we say tangent of x is equal to opposite, which is 15 over 6. You don't have to simplify because we're going to plug it into the calculator. So if tangent of x is this, then what's x? <coughs> Inverse tangent, 5 over 6. And when you plug that in to your calculator, 15 over 6. You get 68.2 degrees. Okay, next I have this one. Again, this is the angle that I'm looking for. We have to label the sides. What side is 13? Opposite, adjacent, hypotenuse. Adjacent, and what about this one? Opposite, again, which ratio? Tangent of what? X equals 7 over 13. And so how do I find X? Inverse tangent, 7 over 13. And X is... 28.3 degrees. All right? Now, there are um, real-life applications to all of this. All right? And um, one of the most direct forms of application is what we call angles of depression and elevation. So let's talk about um, angle of elevation first. 
Angle of elevation is the angle between your line of sight and the horizontal when you look upward. So for example, you're here, okay, you're, you're standing in front of this cabin right here, okay, and you're looking up at the top of a mountain here, okay? You go, oh my God, it would be so wonderful if I could, if I could like, you know, climb to the top of that mountain, okay? So you're standing here. This is the, this is a horizontal line, like at your eye level, all right? And if you look up at the top of the mountain, you naturally form an angle, right? That angle here, that's the angle of elevation, okay? So if this is your line of sight, and this is where you're looking, that's your angle of elevation right here, okay? And remember, angle of elevation is when you're looking up to somewhere elevated, okay? Um, so let's look at this example. A pilot is flying 10,000 feet and wants to take the plane up to 20,000 feet over the next 50 miles. What should the angle of elevation be to the nearest tenth? Oh boy. So here is this plane. Can okay, let me draw a plane. That's my plane. Wait, with a P inside. That's my plane. Okay. And you've got the guy, the pilot inside the plane. He's here. He wants to be here. Okay. So here is his line of sight. Or here's, here's the horizontal. And he looks up to where he wants to go. He wants to go here. How much higher does he want to go? 10,000 feet. Okay? So he wants to go from 10,000 to 20,000. So he wants to go a difference of 10,000 feet. And he wants to do this over the next 50 miles. That means this distance has to be 50 miles. Okay? We're good? Now, what we're looking for is theta. Okay? So this is how we draw this, and you have to have a 90 degree angle here. Um, you know, so in real life, when we draw these angles, you know, it, it's just the triangle. You're just concerned with the triangle. Now, what are some issues here before we even start solving the problem? The units are very different. We have feet and miles. How do you convert feet to miles? One mile is how many? Way to go, Sophia. 5,280 feet is one mile. Okay? So 50 miles is 50 times 5,280 which is 264,000 feet, okay? Now we're ready to start the problem. Okay, so here is the angle that I need, and which two sides do I have to play with? This is the opposite, and so that spells out tangent, okay? Um. So we say tangent of theta is equal to, okay, so theta, this is new, right? I just, I just mentioned theta, and I didn't even um, tell you what it means. So this is a Greek letter. It's, a, it's basically a zero with a vertical bar through it. And the name of it is theta, not theta with an F. It's not cheese. It's T-H theta. Okay, so that's the, um, a, that's the name of the angle, the, that, that's the symbol most often used for angle, okay? You can use an X, I'm just, I, I just um, instinctively just did theta because in the end it's all about theta, okay? All right, so tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent, so it's 10,000 over 264,000. So then how would I find theta? It's what? It's the inverse tangent of 10,000 
over 264,000, which when you plug in your calculator is how much? Right to the nearest tenth, it's 2.2 degrees. Okay, so that's all. He just has to tilt his nose 2.2 degrees. Well, not his nose, the nose of the plane, right? And I mean, that makes sense because like imagine if you got like 50 degrees, right? Does that make sense? Now imagine you're sitting in the plane and the pilot just like angles up the nose 50 degrees. That's like, that's not going to be a fun flight for you, right? Yeah. Um, you should know basic ones, something like this I might give you, I'll, I'll, it, it depends, okay? Like, actually, you know, like something like this one you should know, like 5,280 feet is one mile, you should know that. Is one mile. Um, especially being an honors class, you know, this stuff you should know, okay? All right, so that was angle of elevation. What about um, angle of depression? So suppose you are in this lighthouse right here. You're sitting in that lighthouse at the top of the lighthouse, and you look down um, into an object below you. Okay, you look down at an object below you. Now, you always compare with the horizontal. This is the horiz This is your horizontal line of sight if you were looking straight versus if you're looking down. That's your angle of depression. Okay, that's the angle theta. Okay? Um, the tailgate of a moving van is 3.5 feet above the ground. Um, a okay, you know what, let me actually say something else here. So, Okay, so suppose you're here looking down, and suppose now you've got a friend that's standing down here and looking up at you. This is his horizontal sight, and his angle of elevation is this one. Okay? How do those two angles compare? Why, how, why are they the same? Mathematically, why are they the same? Because you have parallel lines here, and you have alternate interior angles, right? So these two lines are parallel, that means your thetas are the same. So angle of elevation equals angle of depression. Always. Because you're always comparing to the horizontal line. All right. Okay, um, all right, so here we have example two, the tailgate of a moving van is 3.5 feet above the ground here, okay? A loading ramp is attached to the rear of the van at an incline of 10%, which is the length of the ramp, okay? All right. So if this is 10 degrees here, what about this angle here? Also 10 degrees. And what we want is the length of the ramp. The length of the ramp is this one. Okay, it's, it's how long that ramp is. So if this is my triangle, always identify your right triangle. This is the 90 degrees. Which side is the X? Adjacent, opposite, hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. And the 3.5 is which one? Opposite. Opposite, because this is your theta, so it's the opposite. So now, if you have opposite and hypotenuse, again, so katoa, it's sine. So sine of 10 is equal to opposite, which is 3.5 over x. Multiply both sides by x, so x times sine of 10 is equal to 3.5. Divide by sine of 10, divide by sine of 10. x is equal to 3.5 over sine of 10. And x is equal to 20.2 feet. Okay, so that's how long that is. 
Okay. Um, so I'm actually going to start section six today. All right. We'll be ahead of the game that way. Okay, so here is the beauty about trigonometry. So far, we learned SOHCAHTOA, and we said that that's used only for what type of triangles? Right triangles. Um, well, it turns out you can solve for the sides of a triangle even if they're not, it's not a right triangle, okay? So we can expand what we know so that it applies to any triangle, an acute triangle, an obtuse triangle, a scalene triangle, whatever type of triangle, okay? So, um, for the law of sines, this can apply to all triangles, okay? Not just right, okay? So, basically, what this is, is this. Um, okay, so what is sine of A? If you just wanted sine of A, right? It's H over B, okay? What is sine of B? It's H over A, okay? Now, what if um, I wanted to solve both of these <coughs> H, for, uh, for H, right? So let me solve the first one for H. Then it's B sine A is equal to H, right? And here, A sine B is equal to H, right? Okay, so if H is equal to that, and if H is equal to that, that means they're equal to each other, right? So that means B sine A is equal to A sine B, okay? What I want to do now is this. I want to solve both of these. Uh, I want to divide both sides of this by B. Can I do that? Of course I can. So let me just divide both sides by B. Why am I doing this? Because it's fun. Okay. Now you know what I want to do? I want to divide both sides by, guess what? A. This goes away. So finally, let's see what I have left after I cross everything out. I have sine of A over A. whoops, little a, equals sine of b over little b. And guess what? This is called the law of sines. Okay? And... Well, I did, I crossed out the a with the a here. Well, because there is no a here to cross out with. This is capital A, this is little a. Right? Capital A is the angle, little a is the side. So when I divide both sides by B, I can only cancel B from one side, and then I cancel A from the other side, and this is what I have. Okay? So this is called the law of sines. Basically what it says is, you can take the sine of an angle, and you can divide it by the side opposite to the angle. Okay? And that ratio, so now that's a ratio, right? The sine of an angle over the opposite side, that's a ratio. And that ratio is the same for each of the sets of angles and sides. So if I do sine of angle A over A, or if I do sine of angle B over B, or if I do sine of angle C over C, they all give me the same ratio. That's the law of sines, and that's a theorem, okay? The law of sines is a theorem that says sine of A over A is sine of B over B is sine of C over C. And we use that 
and it's like the most marvelous thing on the planet, okay? Because now, with that, we can solve for any, any triangle, all right? It could be um, an isosceles, an obtuse, an acute, whatever you want it to be, okay? So that's the law of sines. Do you have to memorize it? Yeah, you have to memorize it. Is it really like the hardest thing on the planet to memorize? Not really, okay? Sine of A over A, sine of B over B, sine of C over C. Now, um, sometimes um, the law of sines doesn't work, but we won't get to that until Algebra 2, okay? All right, so here it says to solve the following triangle, Solve the triangle means find all missing angles and sides, okay? Um, how many angles are there in a triangle? Three. How many sides? Three. That's a total of six items, right? You will always be given three of those, and you have to find the other three. If you're only given two out of the six, you can't really do much with that, okay? So solve for the triangle means... Um, find missing angles and sides. All right, so here, look at what I have um, to find. I need to find angle R, I need to find little r, and I need to find little e. Okay, so those are the three things that I need to find. Again, you're going to be given three, and you have to find the other three, okay? All right, so what we're going to do is this. We have to use the law of sines. First, what you have to do is find a pair where both angle and side are given, okay? So find a pair which, for which both is given. Which one is that in this case? The, right, the P, right? So in this case, it's capital P and little p. So that's what you start with. So you say, okay, sine of P over little p is equal to, now pick one of the other ones that you want to find. Can you do sine of R over R? No, because you have nothing given there. Can you do sine of E over E? That you can do, okay, sine of E over E. So now here we have sine of P, which is 45, over, what's P? 22 equals sine of 63 over E, okay? Now let me tell you, like, the best thing. I have ever learned in all my years of doing math, okay, like, and I learned this, like, early on, I was your age, you may have already seen this before, you have proportions that you're solving, what's the quickest way to do it, you want to know what the quickest way to do it is, you want to know, you do want to know, you find the diagonal where you have both elements given, that's this one, okay, you multiply them, so that's 22 sine 63, and then you just simply divide by the one you haven't used yet, sine of 45. It works like a charm every time, okay? And now all you have to do is plug this in the calculator. So let's plug that in our calculator. So that's going to be... Um, 22 sine 63 over sine 45. Okay, and I have 27.7 for E. All right, next, what do I want to find next? Um, let's find one of the other ones, okay? So I have E now, 
and that was 27.7. Okay, so um, what else can I find? How can I find angle R? Right, so measure of angle R is equal to 180 minus 45 minus 63. So measure of angle R is equal to how much? 72 degrees. So now that I have R is 72 degrees, I want to find little r. And I always use the ratio that I was given to start with. So I say, okay, sine of 45 over 22 is equal to sine of 72 over little r. So now I want to look for r. And again, it's going to be a fraction. So let me do my little handy dandy trick that I showed you before. You find the angle where both of, you find the um, diagonal where both are given, that's this one, you multiply, and you just divide by the other one, which is sine of 70, uh, 45. Okay, so you plug those in to your calculator, and R is going to be, Twenty nine point six degrees. Okay, so finally, at the end of the day, I have that R is seventy two degrees. Little R is twenty nine point six. Oh, that's not degrees. That's a side. And what else did I have to find here? Little E twenty seven point seven. Um, I'll take a look at your calculator right after, okay? All right, so let's do this one. In this next problem, we have um, a triangle given to us, but we have to draw it ourselves. Um, so we have triangle BWY. But first, let's draw that. B. W, Y, it doesn't matter how you label your angles as long as the side opposite to B is little b and this is little w and this is little y, okay? So it says that angle Y is 66, angle W is 59, and little b is 77, okay? All right, now... We have to um, solve this one. All right, so we can, we can solve for the missing angle first, right? How big is measure of angle B? It's 180 minus 59 minus 66, and that's 55 degrees. Okay? All right, now I have 55. So which is the pair for which I have both of them? It's B. So I'm going to do sine of B over B. So sine of 55 over 77 is equal to, um, and let's do W first, okay? So it's sine of 59 over W. So W is, again, you have a fraction. Find the diagonal where it's complete. So it's 77 sine 59 over sine 55, you plug it in your calculator, and W is 80.6, okay? So that means measure of angle B so far is 55, uh, W is 80.6, and now what else do we have to solve for? Y, okay, so sine of 55, over 77 is equal to sine of 66 over y. And um, y is equal to 77 sine 66 over sine 55. So how much is y? 85.9. OK. 
Okay. All right, let's do this last one. You have triangle XYZ. Y is 17. Um, Z is 14. And angle Y is 92. So let's make a list of all the stuff we have missing. What do we have missing? We have big X and little x. And we have big Z. All right, so do we have a pair for which both of them are given? Those are the Y's. So we say, okay, sine of 92 over 17 is equal to sine of Z over 14. Okay, so what am I looking for here? Sine of Z equals, okay? So this is the one we're looking for here right? So you write that here, equals a fraction line. Find the diagonal where everything is given. That's here, 14 sine 92 divided by, which one haven't we used yet? 17. So now sine of z is equal to that. You know what? I'm not even going to simplify. If sine of z is equal to that, what's z equal to? z is equal to the inverse of that, right? Inverse sine of this. So z is equal to inverse sine of 14 sine 70, 92 over 17. Okay? And you plug that whole thing into your calculator. So what's Z? So if you do um, figure out the, if you do the parentheses separately, it's 0 0.8230. And that's fine. You, you can do that. And this gives you Z is equal to we. 55.4 degrees. Okay, so that's Z. So how can we find angle X then? Subtract from 180. And when we subtract from 180, how big is X? So it's 180 minus 55.4. It's 32.6. All right, so to find little x, we're going to do sine of 92 over 17 equal to sine of 32.6 over little x. So little x is 17 sine of 32.6 over sine of 92. So x is 9.2. Right? So the homework that was at the bottom of this page, page 583 and 593, That'll be due um, tomorrow, okay?